I'm pleased to sponsor the alternative interview. Good to see you. Good to catch up with you. Um, I hope everything's all right with uh, obviously very difficult uh, sort of circumstances at the moment that's going on. But how are you, firstly, before we get into the into all the bits and pieces? Yeah, we're all good, Graham. Thank you. Uh, it's strange. Just want everybody to stay safe. Obviously, it's a mad time at the minute for the world in general. So fingers crossed that you know everybody looks after themselves, and you, of course, you and your family too. So I want to talk about George Borg before he became the order shop manager first. Um, but I want to talk about George Borg before he became a manager because, you know, you were, you, you, you did have a playing career. A lot of people forget that sometimes. And, uh, you know, it, it was uh, an interesting playing career because you played abroad as well. But born in Hackney, 1958, uh, I suppose true East End roots. Oh, without a doubt, mate, never lose your East End quality of people that are, that are from that part of the world you know they're there sometimes we're all a little bit thick in times but you know and I mean that <laughs> from me art um, but they're genuine honest people mate and um, a lovely part of the country that I was brought up in and um, miss it now obviously moving out a little bit but um, yeah great time you know growing up with real people and I suppose it's fitting because you, you you played in youth football at West Ham and, and, and at Millwall. So, um, what recollections do you have of that that playing time? It's quite funny, Graham, really, because obviously, you know, like most people, my, my, my dad passed away when I was twelve years old. So, you know, I had my sister who was helping me out, finding places where to go for trials and everything. And um, you know, I think had I chosen West Ham I probably would have become a lot better player because the coaching staff were really really good you know when you talk about a division one side with you know three World Cup internationals in it who, who won the World Cup uh, you know and and I chose Millwall which I think back now looking back at it probably was the wrong decision at the time for me because I did need a lot of coaching but you know I did have ability too um, but anyway, I, I, I went to Millwall and um, and, and done, done really well. Got in the first team at 16, so that was a good achievement for me. And then, obviously, like you do, you even miss the opportunity where you um, don't improve enough. And, you know, I wasn't offered a contract, another contract at the end of the, uh, the season after being there for three years. And that's where I ended up going to South Africa in, um, in Cape Town with a good friend, Alan Welsh. Who unfortunately passed away like two months ago, um, and 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 that was at the start of me really learning about life, and then you know coming back and going into the non-league scene as a player, and great times, great times, you know, and and I think you, as a non-league player, it is tough, you know, you got a job to go to all day, and then you got to travel and get to a game and prepare for a game and and give it all you got, and um, you know I admire a lot of non-league people, that's for sure. And as you say, you play Wickham Wanderers, Maidstone, Dartford, Dulwich, Hamlet, a number of clubs there. In a prior call from conversations we had in the in the in the past of that, I think John Still and Barry Fry were your managers at different stages. So that must have been a bit of an eye opener. It was uh, John Still. You know, even now we're really good friends, actually, John and I. And um, you know, but back in the day when I played for him, um, I was quite an handful for him. And you know, he found it hard to to like me and just wanted really to lock me in the cupboard. Um, but um, obviously I gave my all for him and he was a, he's been a great manager and fair play to John Steele. He's worked extremely hard to, to have the career that he had. And it was a pleasure to play for him. Barry Fry on the other hand was just a complete loony, I think. And that's what made me be a bit of a loony too, because I loved his character. I loved the way he was. I loved his honesty and, um, he weren't the best coach in the world. He probably wasn't the best manager in the world. But, you know, he was honest and his honesty took him a long way and loved the man to death. Great man. And, of course, you, you were a left-back. Uh, that, that was your position. 
Yes, I was not just an ordinary left back, one of the best left backs. You know, it was uh, a case that not many left backs could score 15, 16 goals a season. Uh, I managed to do that. You know, I was okay. I did take 10 from the penalty spot, but you, know, <laughs> you still got you still got to put me in the net, haven't you? And um, yeah, it, 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 I love left back. It's a great position. It's an easy position. And, you know, I think um, the likes of Theo Foley, who was at Millwall, uh, bless him. <laughs> Theo passed away about four months ago as well. So, you know, a great coach, really um, coached me well to, to make a little bit of space and a little bit of time for yourself. And because I wasn't the quickest, but, you know, I had a, had a decent brain. And um, yeah, it's a great position and it's an easy position. I find it one of the easiest on, on the pitch. And then just talk a little, a little bit, because you went to America, you played um, the Carolina Lightning, Lightning. I think Rodney Marsh and Bobby Moore were over there at that time as well. So what memory do you have of that? Well, Bob, uh, uh, Rodney was the, um, would, first of all, when it was a new franchise, he, he was looking for a centre forward and he was looking, you know, and his dad was a, a great Wickham supporter. And he said, um, you know, we've got a, a centre forward called Terry Glynn. He's a good player, blah, 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 blah. And um, the dad, you know, obviously drove, came with us to the games because he was good mates with uh, Terry Glynn's dad. And um, when they were telling me about it, I was just psyching myself up and going, yeah, I'll have some of that. And I literally, I was, I was outstanding. I had a really good game. I scored two goals, one from the penalty spot and cut inside and curled it in the top corner. And give it all to Biggin, and and he loved that type of character, and uh, he didn't pick Terry; he picked me instead. So that was fun going on that day, that that evening, because I was rubbing it in. Yeah, I'm going to go and do something I really wanted to do. And that first year was a, a, an amazing season. You know, um, it was just we won the whole thing in front of twenty five thousand against New York United, and um, the, the second year Wickham wouldn't let me go, but the third year was great. Bobby Moore was our coach. Rodney had gone up to manager and general manager and Bobby was our coach. And obviously all the lads said, you know, wait till you meet George Ball. Oh, mate, he is, he does, he takes the throne. He really does. He's, he's, and my first meeting with Bob, even though, you know, I didn't have a chance to say, I remember you when you was at West Ham and, and, and sat, not South Ham, but at West Ham, blah, 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 blah. And I walked up and went, Mr. Moore, it's an honour. And he said, you take the out of me and you'll be on the next plane home. I went, I love you though, Bob, and walked off. And Bob didn't really like me at the, the start, but I seemed to grow on him a little bit. And um, and a great man. They say sometimes don't meet your heroes, but meeting Bobby and just having drinks with him and just having him alongside me at the age of 42 years old, you know, 41 years old, and his brain was amazing. You know, it's just watching someone like that who led our country to the World Cup final and won it. And to play alongside him is a dream come true. I've still got pictures that I look at and it was just amazing. And he's an, an amazing man too. And uh, I always think of him often because he did look after me in the end. So you, you, you come back and then you 28 years old and you, you start your management career at, at Barking. What? What was the attraction first of, of management coaching or whatever it would be at that time? None, Graham, really. Um, I was actually, I was 26 um, and I, I took a severe knee injury um, at Maidstone playing for Barry Fry, Fry. And then Bill Williams took over and um, he obviously didn't fancy me and he knew that I had this injury where, you know, I was out for about eight months. Like my knee was just knocked in half. My leg was knocked in half. And uh, I thought, well, I'll step down a little bit. And I think um, Bobby Arbor, Bobby Arbor was manager and said, come on, you only live up the road, come and play. And I played and I thought, this ain't bad. I can have a little go at this. And it was nice. And it was great for the, the, the uh, social side of it. Barking, you know, weren't the greatest team in the world, but they had great characters and we had fun after games. You know, we'd finish at six, be in the bar at half six and wouldn't leave till one o'clock in the morning. And it was just amazing, Graham. That is non-league of old. Um, and then Bobby left and the two um, chairmen at the time, they were two ex-SAS men, uh, Jock and Tomo, both as mad as they come. I sat there till two o'clock in the morning and they were telling me stories about their lives and everything. 
And I used to sit there and think, God, I'm never going to get out of this club. They won't let me. They'll just kill me and stuff me and put me somewhere. Um, but they were amazing people. And that's where it started at Barking. And, you know, I, I stayed there, done really well with them for a year and a bit. And then moved on to Chelmsford and, 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 and so on. And just progressed to get up the ladder to, to manage, you know, high profile clubs, which I managed to achieve. You've got to tell me that story. You, I remember you told me years ago at Chelmsford about the um, the fan who was giving you abuse and, ah. and, and the frozen. Oh, the frozen orange. <laughs> he, he, they, they were Ipswich supporters, but they used to come and watch Chelmsford on a Monday night. And we, I just, I, I've taken over. I've, I've been about there about six weeks, but we was finding it difficult to get, you know, but we'd managed to get some points and, and so on. But it was difficult because four go down. And when I took over, they were second from bottom. And um, I started getting some results and doing well, but they just come to take the mickey really and just abuse people. And um, I got, the ball went out for a throw in. And as I went to take it, uh, take the, get the ball and retrieve it to take the throw in, uh, he threw a big manky orange at me, hit me straight on the face like, you know, and I, me being me, I just went, oh, really nice, nice orange that mate, where'd you get it from? And I was going, yeah, I'll take the mickey. So I thought, my time will come. So I said to Kim, go and get me a nice orange for me, a really juicy one. And she got me a really nice orange and um, I put it in a freezer. And then three weeks later, we had a home game on a Monday night. So when I got to the grand, Peter Caulfield was my assistant, bless him. And um, I said, Peter, if we're beating Ashford, drag me off with 10 minutes to go or five minutes, because then, you know, if anything happens, we've got time to recover. So I was winning 3-0. They still were giving us all the abuse and everything. So I went to Peter, get me off. And he knew what I meant by that. So I ran into the dressing room, opened the fridge freezer, got the orange out, put it in a cloth because as soon as it comes out to a higher temperature, it starts going white. So I got it and I, you know, I'm wiping it. I got it off him so they couldn't see me in the dugout. I ate it up my jumper. God, it was freezing. Obviously, it just came out of a freezer. <laughs> so anyway, as I walked off the pitch, I went, wait, Tabby, on your head. And he went, go on in, boogie. And I went, woof. Well, his head caved in. It just, his just head went, gee. And I went, he's put it in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> it was rock hard, Graham. I'm lucky I didn't kill him. But either way, you know, don't come to football matches just, just to abuse. So he learned his lesson. But yeah, love that story. He, he, I don't think he come back again after that. <laughs> Neither did his mates. <laughs> and they went off of oranges. <laughs> so... As you said, a good, good career, a good, good start in management. You won the, the Isthmian Division One at Chel Chesham United, um, had a good spell at Harrow Borough, and then you end up at Enfield. Yeah, um, you know all those clubs that I managed to, to work for. I, I, I got a bit of silverware at each club, which was great. You know, when I went to Chesham from Chelmsford, I mean the, the greatest honour was keeping Chelmsford up, really. But then I went to um, Chesham and we won the league uh, and, 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 you know, that was a bit of silverware for us. And then I went to Harrowborough and won the two Middlesex Cups. And then I went to, to Enfield and won the league, got to the quarterfinals of the trophy and third rounds of the FA Cup, third round of the FA Cup and second rounds of the FA Cup. And that was one of the biggest clubs at, at the time. Enfield was a massive club. And... Yeah, I was really pleased that I got the opportunity to go and, and, and work there, uh, a big club with beautiful supporters, amazing supporters. And then, um, you know, that was a great time that I had there. I think I had uh, three seasons there, which was great. And I can remember when you were manager of Enfield, about a year before you came to Aldershot, you, you, they played Aldershot, didn't they, in the League Cup? And, yes, and you did. Yeah, we played you. Came down and, and won 3 0. Do, do you remember that game much? Yes, or? I do. Yes, yeah. I do. Exactly. I came down. I really wanted to impress because, you know, I heard like you do through grapevines that um, there is a little bit of unrest and there was a little bit of unrest at um, Aldershot at the time. And um, if I remember right, I think Steve Wigley or Wignall mm. was manager. Wigley, that's it. Wigley, yeah, was manager and um, a nice guy, Stevie. I liked him, to be honest with you. And we had a couple of good chats before the game and we beat you 3-0. And I think I left the mark on that because it weren't too long after that game that I think uh, Stevie uh, had left the club. That's right. He went at the end of, of that season. And then, so, uh, start of 1997... 
And this is where we come to the order shop bit, of course. And what what are your first recollections in terms of knowing there was a vacancy, your manager of Enfield, so but it's a job that you want? Uh, I was just honest and just said to Tony Lazaro, look, you know, um, I think it's time I moved on. You know, Alder, Alder Shot are a massive club, great support, you know, and, and, and I would like to be a part of their history. And it's another step up the ladder for me because they've been an ex-football league club, so on. And he was all for it, actually. He said, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. You've been brilliant here. You've, you know, you've won the league and finished second twice. And, you know, and, and, and he was great. So he allowed me to, to, to put my CV in at, at Alder Shot Sound Football Club. And you get the interview, of course. And I've written in the book I wrote, I, I just wrote this bit about when you came and um, obviously you've read my book. Yes, absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Loved every, uh, brilliant, Graham. I took it at work with me because I had a little bit of time at work. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in the car, uh, sit in the van and, 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 and forget about work because it was, it was a great book. Well done you, mate. It was a great book. But I put in there, I said, the first up for interview stole the show. I met him at reception and he had it all. Chirpy, a swagger about him, a bit of cheek too, but he could hold his own with the best of them. And he was never phased at all. Always assured of his own ability. And his name was George Borg, a 39-year-old cockney with a decent pedigree in non-league football. He had a fierce reputation too. For me, the other candidates were wasting their time. So you were the first one. I can remember it vividly uh, coming in. And obviously you impressed because you... um, you were offered the job, but what do you remember about the interview? The interview was really good. At, um, obviously, got the utmost respect for Terry Owens, who was my chairman at the time. Um, lovely man and a great man to, to, to work for. Um, you know, and, and Terry, like always, is very professional and conducted himself very well. So I needed to combine that with um, the way that I was. And, and thankfully... Um, you know, Terry and, and the board of directors thought I was the right man for the job. And so you got the job. We went out for a meal. Um, you, you'd obviously gone home, but we went out for a meal in the evening saying, at a celebratory thing, saying we've got the, got him here. And then it didn't quite happen as smoothly as, uh, as we all hoped it would, did it? Because um, th- there were problems at Enfield and we set a press conference. You couldn't make, you, 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 you weren't there. It didn't look like it was going to happen. And then it did eventually happen three or four weeks later. But a very turbulent period. It must have been difficult for yourselves. It was difficult with the football club as well. What do you remember about that time? Well, well, I remember uh, when I, you know, after the interviews and everything, and then I think a, uh, an hour later or so, I got the call to say that I'd got the job. And I think um, I went back and the next day uh, I told Tony Lazarou and he started saying, well, look, it's going to be hard to find a manager of your calibre. I want 10, 15 grand for you. I said, well, you'll be barking up a tree there, Tony, Tony Lazarou, because... Aldershot hasn't got haven't got that money, mate. So they've got big supporters, but you know, uh, they're financial fi- financially they're trying to get on their feet and so on. And then he just started making things difficult. So in the end, I just said to him, "Look, if you're going to be like that, then I don't want to work for you." And you know, and then it, the table turned because um, he started interviewing other managers, and some managers said that you know, yeah, I'll come in and I'll give you this, I'll give you that, this sponsor, and it was our great friend Graham Wesley. Um, who Graham took over from me and I left Enfield at third in the league. Eventually, after that period of time, he said, yeah, go on, you can go to Aldershot. And, and I went, to, obviously I came to Aldershot and it was great to see that Graham Wesley took him down from third from bottom and then left the club. So, you know, it just goes to show, doesn't it? So you arrived there, you, you come in. I, I can remember we had a game, I think it was against Wembley on the Tuesday night and you were... You hadn't been announced, but we knew you were coming by then and it was all, you know, everything had been sorted out. And then um, you officially came just around, just, uh, whether it was that night or the day after and that. And then you brought Stuart Cash with you, didn't you, as your, as your yeah. assistant. Um, and it was all all ready to go. And, and we'll come to the that first season in a moment. But what were your first impressions when you arrived at the club, knowing that you were the manager? Oh, I loved it, Graham. It was, it was an honour for me. It really was an honour. And, you know, everyone saying you won't last six weeks there. Their supporters are, are off their head. All they want to do is scream and shout and abuse you. And they were just good, honest people. Just wanted their team to do well. That was my mentality. Obviously, you're not going to do 
you're not going to be consistent every week and win every game every week, which I felt was a bit of a challenge because that was the expo- expectation of the football club. Um, and rightly so, you know, they're, they're pulling in 3,000 supporters a week. So, you know, I accepted that and I got on really well with the supporters throughout. It, it wasn't an issue. And I thought, wow, how lucky am I? Woohoo! New manager of all the shots and amazing. But more managers today, they think they're better than what they are and, and, and they're really not, Graham. You know, they've come along and they've got these suits on and their National League and, yeah, I'm Mr Billy Big. And, and they're really, really not. Some donut who, who I can't remember his name, um, some Essex team, uh, said to me, uh, yeah, but Borg only does it when he wins. And I said, yeah, but that's because I don't lose. 